Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining in another week. Have a great show planned for you. Later on, I'll have with me Mitch Vingel, former longtime award-winning sports journalist who covered WVU sports for decades. We'll be talking about the halfway point of the WVU football season, what we've seen so far, and also a preview of the WVU basketball season. But first, we'll start with some of our usual features. And I want to start off by talking a little bit of politics. And uh, this week was the fourth Democratic presidential debate uh, this one held uh, not too far away from us in Columbus, Ohio at Otterbein. Um, and, you know, it was interesting to see 12 people on the debate stage. I think the most that have ever been on a single debate stage. And there's a question we have to be asking ourselves now. Are we ready for a female president? You know, Elizabeth Warren has now kind of established herself as the front runner uh, amongst the Democratic candidates. Joe Biden holding that uh, kind of torch for, for quite some time now. But Elizabeth Warren has kind of taken over and other candidates kind of thrown some jabs at her, you know, kind of identifying her as the front runner. And, you know, Senator Warren, um, you know, would be, of course, the first female president. The 2016 election, we saw Hillary Clinton as the first nominee by one of the uh, major uh, parties. And, of course, she wasn't successful. But did that pave the way for another female now? And it's interesting when you watch that debate stage and you see, you know, a number of females up on the stage and that Democratic primary this year, you know, of the 12, you know, we see, you know, four women up there. Um, it, it does show that, you know, maybe the, the path has been paved. And I know Senator Klobuchar had a very good night at the debate uh, from Minnesota. Um, you know, so you, you look at that and then Kamala Harris from, from California, Tulsi Gabbard from uh, Hawaii, and you see all these women up there. Are we ready? I think we are. Uh, I think that, you know, in 2020, our country has come to the point where we say, hey, Let's try something different. Let's do something we haven't done before. And I think we saw that back in 2008 with the election of Barack Obama. A lot of people ask themselves the question, you know, will America elect a black president? And of course, we did. Not just once, but twice. But we've never had a female president. And will America elect a female president? I think it's just a matter of time. We've seen it in so many other major countries around the world with female prime ministers, presidents, etc. Um, and I think the time uh, may be close to here. Long way to go still with this, even this primary. You know, Elizabeth Warren, Vice President Biden, uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, all still in the mix. Um, you know, Mayor Pete Buttigieg out of uh, South Bend, Indiana, had a very good night. A lot of people thought it was maybe his best night. Um, but Senator Warren really kind of establishing herself. And that may be the recipe for the Democrats in order to defeat Donald Trump in the next election is to bring out voters that maybe otherwise wouldn't come out. And perhaps that's the female vote. You know, females just didn't really, women didn't really get behind Hillary Clinton because a lot of history and, and, and perhaps even baggage, uh, as some would describe it, came with her from previous uh, dealings w from her time as Secretary of State, her, her husband's time as President, her time as First Lady, et cetera. Um, but Senator Warren, a little bit different story. Um, you know, there's going to be a, a very big contrast, I think, between uh, President Trump and whoever the Democratic nominee may be. A lot of uh, talk about health care, uh, and, and many of the Democrats looking at Medicare for all, where all will be covered by uh, health care. And, you know, Canada has health care for everyone. And uh, you know, I've heard of even some people moving to Canada so they could get health care. So that'll be a big topic uh, for this year's election, is, uh, or this upcoming year's election, is. Uh, health care uh, as it has been in the past but we'll keep an eye on that but I think that's gonna be one of the big stories here is will a female again be a nominee from the Democratic Party and, and can that person break through this time give you a quote here this week I always like to give a quote and this one uh, is kind of seasonal so to speak it's, some people are born for Halloween and some are just counting the days until Christmas that comes from Stephen Graham Jones who's an American author and um, it's interesting because you talk to a lot of people and you say, what's your favorite holiday? And a number of people will say Halloween. Um, I've got one child of my six who really loves Halloween, loves to scare people, loves to dress up, and he's only four, but just thinks it's, a, it's such a ball. And, of course, he loves Christmas too. But um, I think Halloween is, is, is cool because it's a time you can kind of just have fun. Um, Christmas is a time for giving, a time for uh, thinking about the true meaning of Christmas, which is the coming of Jesus into the world. But Halloween is, is kind of a time for kids to really just have a, a great time. Um, so I think that's an interesting quote there, but I, I want to make note of something here too. Uh, be mindful of Halloween safety. You know, if you're out, um, and I think this year in particular, WVU is going to have a football game on Halloween evening against Baylor. 
the Thursday night game it's at Baylor but a lot of people will probably be going out to restaurants bars etc to watch the game maybe right after work going out and having a drink or something uh, before the game be careful if you're on the roads don't drink and drive remember kids are going to be out uh, in the dark trick-or-treating uh, if you are out with kids be extra careful because people will be on the roads maybe they're watching the game things like that um, check out your kids candy make sure it's safe you know you like to think here in our community we don't have those issues but it could happen anywhere where uh, you know candy has something that shouldn't be in it so really really be careful uh, and and watch what the kids are doing and uh, think about safety all the way have flashlights if you need to uh, if you're driving out in the cars you know don't just go the speed limit go well below the speed limit on Halloween night don't want to see anything tragic happen on a night that's supposed to be a lot of fun for everyone so that's my thoughts on Halloween safety we need to take a break when I ha when we come back I'll have with me Mitch Vingle will be talking WVU football WVU basketball stay with me here on the Jamie Bordas Show. You can love what you drive. Sunset Motors continues to be the 2019 Ohio Valley leader in Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, and Dodge sales. During Ram Power Days at 25% off a 2019 Ram. Or lease one for $2.99 per month. Lease a Gladiator Sport for $3.59 per month. Or buy one for $38.105. Get a new Jeep Compass starting at $18,220. Or lease a Latitude for $2.79 per month. You can love what you drive at Sunset. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Neil Brown. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company, The Mountaineers Call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Welcome back to the show. This is my favorite time each week when I have a guest with me, and this week's no different. I have with me Mitch Vingle, who is now at Wheelhouse Creative here in Wheeling, but formerly longtime journalist in the state of West Virginia, covering the Mountaineers, won numerous awards, including Sports Journalist of the Year. And uh, Mitch, it's good to have you here. It's nice to be here. I enjoy it. I know you're getting to uh, enjoy being a fan now of the Mountaineers a little bit more <laughs> than a writer, but continue to, of course, write a blog every Monday on the Wheelhouse Creative uh, social media pages, etc., cetera, uh, called The New View. The uh, New View, yep. Because you kind of do have a new view from the stands instead I of the press box. I used to have the view from here, and now it's The New View. Yes. Yeah. So, so have fun with it and still keep my hand in a little bit. So changes for WVU football, of course. You know, uh, new coach this year, Neil Brown, and uh, so changes for you, changes for the program. And uh, we're at the halfway point now of the season, six games in and uh, three and three, even yeah. 500 record. And uh, what do you think? What have we seen so far? Well, it's funny because at the beginning, I, I continued my uh, annual uh, prediction. I do a game by game, and so far I'm on point. And I predicted a six and six. But I didn't know about all these uh, injuries and all these players leaving and so forth. Um, obviously, West Virginia is playing Oklahoma this weekend, and that's going to be a tough one. I mean, West Virginia's quarterbacks hurt. There are injuries across the board, and it's going to be really tough. I said in, in that uh, blog at the beginning of the year that if West Virginia comes out of Oklahoma healthy, in good shape, I think they can finish three or six and six because I see some games at the end, Kansas State, um, maybe even uh, maybe even Oklahoma State. There are some games that I think they can win, um, but I don't know. I, I, I brought my list here. I mean, I, I checked from the preseason till now. Um, gone from the team, Marcus Sims, Tevin Bush. Uh, the offensive line has been shuffled. Um, Josh Sills is out, who was one of West Virginia's best um, offensive linemen. Martel Petaway is now gone. On defense, Taj Alston, who is one of their better uh, defensive linemen, is gone. Van Darius Cowan is gone. Just on and on, Giovanni Stewart, uh, the spear, is gone. Now you've got a freshman in there. Um, Derek Pitts, gone. Uh, Keith Washington, hurt. We're down to people that we've never heard of. Nick Troy Fortune might be playing at cornerback. So it's just, it's going to be tough. You know, this kind of goes both ways. You know, in terms of for this season, 
makes it tough. Maybe building for the future maybe helps a little bit. But, you know, some people may say, is this a sign of, you know, trouble with the coaching staff that, hey, all these guys are leaving, what's going on? But maybe it's just that there's more discipline than there have been in the past. Maybe that's a good thing for the long term. Yeah, and I don't think I've, I've been around sports a long time, like you said, and I don't think I've ever seen an outpouring of support like for Neil Brown. I mean, the way that people came out for the spring game and the way they've just welcomed him to West Virginia, I've never seen that. Uh, even going back, you know, to, to like a, uh, the prodigal son, so to speak, in Rich Rodriguez. You didn't see this warmth, this we want you in. And maybe it's because of how Dana Holgerson left and, and yeah. you know, how he was when he was in Morgantown. But uh, he's, got a, he's, he's got a lot of rope, and he's going to do it the right way. And I've said this before to people. If I had a kid, I would love for him to play for a Neil Brown. You know, and, and I think that's – that's true, and you know, you look at uh, even the man trip on before the game that happens two and a half hours before the game. You know, when 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 Neil Brown walks with the team through the crowd, his wife and his three kids are always right there with him. The other coaches have their kids with him. He's really kind of established that family culture, that caring culture, and I think that speaks a lot to parents when he comes out and his other coaches come to recruit. You know, you worry about your kid going to college somewhere and to think, hey, this guy and his staff are going to take care of my kid. I think that'll help with recruiting. Well, and I think it'll help. Uh, you talk about dealing with the parents. I mean, he's, he's established things like a book club. You know, when have you ever heard of that with coaches and so forth? So he really does have those kids um, uh, best interest at heart, I think. And I think that's going to, uh, parents are going to like that. And more and more, he even said about this recruiting class, he thinks they're going to finish strong this year. So we'll see. That's one of the things he's got to prove. I think a little more creativity as far as his play calling and so forth. We'd, we'd like to see a little bit more of that. Um, but he's shown that he's, he can put together a program that a lot of people will be attracted to and want to support, more importantly. You mentioned the team has to go to Oklahoma this weekend, uh, noon kickoff here Eastern against uh, the Sooners. And you know, it takes me back to when I was a young kid in the early 80s and uh, going out there. I, I didn't go personally, but I listened on the radio back then. Sure. Uh, every game wasn't on TV like it is today, right. but listening to Jeff Hostetler going out there knocking yeah. off Oklahoma, huge win, you know, uh, and people are like, who's this Hostetler guy? And, you know, going to be a new quarterback perhaps this week, depending upon Austin Kendall's status, you know. He got uh, banged up with a chest injury last week against Iowa State. Uh, Jack Allison had to come in and play a lot of football. Uh, the question this week is who's the quarterback going to be? Is it going to be Austin Kendall? Is it going to be Allison? Could it be Trey Lowe? Could there be a Jared Dagey sighting? I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, uh, you know, Dagey could have four games and still I, I preserve think, the year. I think Dagey is the one that he would like to have gone to all along, but uh, perhaps wasn't ready. Um, yeah, I hear a lot about, I don't know, what would you do? You're an old quarterback. I well, mean, here's, here's my thoughts. Jack Allison, I would go ahead and start him. I would mix in Trey Lowe and maybe get him, give him a little bit of taste, and then maybe go with him from here on out, just to see. My, my, my view is, if Deggie's ready, if, he, if, he, if he's physically ready, I mean, he had off-season surgery, if he's physically ready, if he knows enough of the playbook, He's gotten some reps. I'd go with Deggie. Deggie's going to be the quarterback next year, in my view. I, Absolutely. I, I, Deggie's going to be the next quarterback. Right. If you, you can get him four games this year to get him ready, I, I don't know that Oklahoma is the, the, the right place to do that for the first time. <laughs> that's the, that's the <laughs> trick because Oklahoma's defense is not, you right. know, the Oklahoma defense we're used to seeing playing much better football this year. And with the, as you said, so many guys missing the pieces and everything, is that the right place to throw him in there? But – you also don't have a whole heck of a lot to lose. I mean, nobody's expecting the Mountaineers to win this right. game anyway. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I, I think, especially like I said with Trey Lowe, is that really fair? Do you, do you want to throw him in there? Yeah. Because this is, they're staring at a, a, a train coming down the tracks, you know? Are, are there enough wins out there to maybe get to a bowl game still? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think so. Um, like I said, K State, uh, Texas Tech, um, you know, Oklahoma State, that's kind of going to be the swing game, I think, because. Um, Baylor's playing good football, they're, but that, you, you know, you never but know. But they're going to have to, get, like I said, they're going to have to get some of these people healthy. It's, <laughs> and some of them are just gone, yeah. you know, like, like I said, um, Sean Ryan, that's another kid. The, the wide receiver is gone. Yeah. You mentioned a lot of receivers you mentioned there, you know, that are, that are no longer yeah. uh, with the program. We need to take a break. When we come back, 
Believe it or not, WVU basketball is just around the corner. We'll be talking some of the basketball and what will Coach Huggins' team do this year. Stay with us here on the Jamie Borda Show. When reviewing your oil and gas offers or royalty check statements, do you wonder, am I being offered a fair amount? Do I feel comfortable reading the statement? Do I have peace of mind? If you answered no to these questions, you need Bordas Mineral Management. Our passion is helping mineral owners protect and expand their mineral wealth. Our examiners tell you whether you're being treated fairly and getting paid what is rightfully yours. Bordas Mineral Management. Be protected. Have peace of mind. Recommended by the highest authorities. Danoon Lumber. It's like a bad one's coming. Yeah. Right? Welcome back to the show. I've been speaking with my guest this week, Mitch Vingle, who is a longtime sports journalist covering WVU and now at Wheelhouse Creative. And Mitch, we were talking about WVU football, but it's almost time for basketball season. I mean, mm -hmm. that's early November, the games start up and, uh, you know, it's a, an exhibition game uh, and then a game against Akron at home to start the season, then at Pitt, you know, we're kind of the, yeah. the backyard rivalry the last couple of years here has been renewed in basketball. We'll be in football in a couple of years, but, um, you know, WVU coming off a really tough season last year and will things turn around? Yeah, I think uh, Bob Huggins was miserable, as I was telling you last year, and this is a chance to redeem himself. Um, you know, he's got that schedule you were talking about. Uh, Brian Messerly, I was talking to him from WVU, and he called it a, a tricky, tough non-conference schedule because of you've got Pitt, you've got Ohio State in there, you've got um, they're going to a tournament where they could be playing Wichita State or um, I think South Carolina. So they've got that to, to maneuver through, and then of course the Big 12. So, but he's got some talent. I mean, uh, he's got. I counted for for one of my Monday blogs that they have five kids that are either four or five stars on the team. And one of them's counting Jalen Bridges, the kid from Fairmont they just got. But when's the last time you ever heard West Virginia have five, four, or five star kids? Yeah, I don't remember it ever happening, right. to be honest. I mean, um, and he's already, you know, I think working toward, you know, the future years as well. I mean, um, Isaiah Cottrell, um, who's now at Huntington Prep that it was, was out in Vegas before, has committed and, uh, and he was in town a couple weekends ago up for just a visit or to, to, to hang out or whatever but he's he seems in all the way I mean he, he, to go from Las Vegas to now being at Huntington Prep this year seems like he wanted to be closer to yeah. Morgantown etc so it seems like uh, you know things are looking up but you know coming off of a losing record you don't see that with the Bob Huggins team too often and as you mentioned the Big 12 schedule can always be challenging when you got teams like Kansas in there and Texas right. play, uh, can play good basketball uh, et cetera, so. And Texas Tech, I mean, look what, sure, what absolutely. they did last year, you know. So you, it's always going to be a, a, a tough road to hoe. But uh, like I said, he's got some, some kids, and, and Oscar Schwebwe is a five-star kid, McDonald's All-American, and I'm excited to see him. I, I was telling you I, I got some tickets for uh, football this year and want to go to more basketball games because I'm excited to see some of these kids. You got Derek Culver, who was a – all Big 12 honoree. Um, actually, Schwebe, uh, Oscar, I'm sure most people are going to call him Oscar, but he was today, uh, well, he was this week uh, named the uh, preseason Big 12 freshman of the year. So, again, when has that not gone to a Kansas kid, right? right. You know, so it, it should be exciting. It'll, it'll depend, I think, on how their guards fair this and, year. Uh, and, and to be fair to Coach Huggins, there were some tough breaks last year too with, you know, Kanate not, you know, uh, being in the mix, et cetera. And he's doing really well uh, from the preseason for the Toronto Raptors. I mean, right. I think a real pleasant surprise for them. And you may end up making that team. Uh, so, you know, it's... Uh, I mean, consider if they had Culver, uh, Kanate, and then Oscar Schwebe this year. Yeah. I mean, that would... no. No team in the country could touch that front line. Yeah, re really impressive. And they'll, they'll have two of the three. So right. 
Uh, it could be interesting. How much longer for Bob Huggins, do you think? I mean, this is now, this will be his 13th season in Morgantown. He's getting up there in age. He's not the healthiest guy in the world. He lives right. pretty hard. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, so, you know, how much longer do you I, think? I, I think it's a great question. Um, but here's the thing. He loves basketball so much. Um, I don't know what he would do without it, to be honest. Now, I know that he's got a place in W's athletic department after this. Um, they, he's got a lifetime contract. He's always going to be around. Everybody loves him. And so I think he's going to go as long as he feels he can. Um, I remember one time he and I got into an argument back and forth. We were yelling at each other as, as you know, columnists and, and coaches are wont to do once in a while. And uh, he, he got all upset about something kind of minor to me. And I said, Coach, it's only a game. And he said, it is not a game. He said, that is my passion. He said, that is what, uh, it's, uh, he didn't say everything to me, but he kept saying, it's my passion, that sport. And it told me something about him. And I think he'll go as long as he possibly can to answer your question. Well, it'll be fun to watch the season this year. We'll see what the, the football team does the rest of the year, and it'll uh, be certainly interesting to see what the basketball de team does coming off last year. I, I think they'll be back in the NCAA tournament this year. I really do. Yeah, I do too. It's, like I said, it's going to depend on, on some of their other players. Uh, the guard, they might go with a lot of three-guard rotation this year. Um, Emmett Matthews, one of the kids he says, was most improved. So they'll have Matthews and then, who knows, Haley or Harler. Chase Harler may be starting for them, so we'll see. Well, Mitch, thanks for being here. Always enjoy I talking enjoy with it. you and yeah. always enjoy talking to WVU. And uh, we'll see what happens with the team. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking sports. We'll be talking about the Duck, Devlin Hodges, and also college football. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordis Show. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. At Bordis and Bordis, when we see this, we do something about it. We can't prevent bad things from happening, but we can get justice when they do. Bordis and Bordis, fighting for justice. You can love what you drive. Sunset Motors continues to be the 2019 Ohio Valley leader in Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, and Dodge sales. During Ram Power Days at 25% off a 2019 Ram. Or lease one for $2.99 per month. Lease a Gladiator Sport for $3.59 per month. Or buy one for $38.105. Get a new Jeep Compass starting at $18,220. Or lease a Latitude for $2.79 per month. You can love when you drive at Sunset. Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports, and we'll start off in Pittsburgh, where the Duck, Devlin Hodges, the rookie quarterback out of Samford, not Stanford in California, it's Samford down in Alabama, FCS school, led the Steelers to a win in Los Angeles over the Chargers this past Sunday night. And, you know, we're talking about a guy who didn't make the team. You know, he was the fourth quarterback in camp this year. You had Ben Roethlisberger, you had Josh Dobbs, you had Mason Rudolph, and then Devlin Hodges, this guy no one had ever, anybody had ever heard of. And he didn't make the team, he got cut. And then all of a sudden, Josh Dobbs gets traded. Ben Roethlisberger goes down, Mason Rudolph goes down, and suddenly he's not only on the team, he's starting the starting quarterback. You know, only five games into the season. And pretty unbelievable story. So he gets a start as a rookie and goes out and wins and you know throwing touchdown passes etc so the Steelers get a big win over the Chargers in Los Angeles and now get a bye week at a much needed time unfortunately Stefan to uh injured in that game out for the year now with a torn uh, chest muscle uh, very sad to see that but seeing those rookies play like Devlin Hodges and Devin Bush of course the linebacker rookie linebacker out of Michigan the AFC defensive player of the week you know, in on a couple of turnovers, uh, was able to get a score even uh, on the defensive side. Uh, and now, after the bye week, the Steelers get the Dolphins, who are not just bad, but perhaps historically bad, uh, and to have people even question whether they're tanking games to try to get the number one pick next year. Uh, but they'll get the Dolphins next, and then the Colts, the Rams, the Browns, the Bengals. 
If the Steelers can go four to one, four and one in those games, which I think they have a real chance to do, they can get that record up to six and five. And now all of a sudden it's like, hey, maybe the playoffs aren't out of the question. So uh, keep an eye on that. Of course, Mason Rudolph has some time here now to heal up with the bye week, and um, likely he'll be the starting quarterback again. But uh, congratulations to Devlin Hodges. I mean, that, that couldn't have been the only game he ever plays in his life. And uh, But to be a starting quarterback in the NFL, uh, and I think it may not be the only game because I think he's got a real future and showed some poise. So uh, we'll keep an eye on the Steelers in uh, the weeks to come. Let's talk college football and set out your college football Saturday. Of course, at noon, the, the game uh, Mitch Bingle and I already talked about, WVU at number five Oklahoma, that game will be on Fox. Uh, and Oklahoma just has all the pieces. I mean, Jalen Hurts, a quarterback who almost never loses, hasn't lost at Oklahoma yet, only had the two losses while he was at Alabama. He's played in national title games, playoff games, et cetera. CeeDee Lamb at receiver, maybe the best receiver in the country. I mean, just tough to stop. Lincoln Riley, an offensive genius. That OU defense is not the defense we're used to seeing out of Oklahoma. Just too much explosiveness, too much missing for the Mountaineers. Uh, the Sooners win by a bunch in this one, unfortunately, I think. Also at noon, Number nine, Florida at South Carolina. And this one really intrigues me. You know, Florida coming off a tough game where they lost by a couple touchdowns to LSU, who may be playing as well as anyone in the country. South Carolina upset Georgia. Big upset win for them. South Carolina's probably feeling good all week. Those players are getting patted on the back. Georgia, you know, miserable and probably having tough practices. They're still in the playoff picture. I think Georgia wins this one. Uh, just those teams coming off different emotions from last week. Then 3.30, game I'm really looking forward to seeing right here on WTRF on ABC. Number 12, Oregon at number 25, Washington. Two quarterbacks that are fun to watch. Justin Herbert for Oregon. 17 touchdowns against only one interception this year. Jacob Eason for Washington, the guy that transferred from Georgia. 13 touchdowns, three interceptions. Be fun to watch. Oregon had a bad fourth quarter against Auburn. They're probably undefeated in the top five or six in the country. This game's at Washington, but I just think Oregon will pull it out because Herbert will make plays uh, when he needs to. Then 7.30, also on ABC, right here on WTRF. Number 16, Michigan at number 7, Penn State. An interesting Big Ten matchup here. I think both teams are overrated, to be honest with you. I think it could be a low-scoring game. Penn State has a sophomore quarterback in Sean Clifford that's relatively inexperienced. Michigan has an experienced quarterback in Shea Patterson. But this is a night game in Happy Valley. Night games in Happy Valley. Give me Penn State. That crowd will be crazy loud. It is so loud up there. Give me them. 4 o'clock, uh, I'll give you a couple of games that I think just interesting to watch. 18, Baylor at Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma State wins this game on the road. I think Baylor it was double overtime last week. Uh, took a lot of energy. I think they have to go to Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma State wins it. And let me give you one upset special here. At 3.30, Temple at number 19, SMU on ESPN2. Temple is a 7.5 point underdog. Uh, SMU a couple weeks ago took three overtimes to beat Tulsa. Uh, I think Temple it just gets this one done. Uh, and I think that they'll uh, beat uh, SMU in the upset there. We'll continue to keep an eye on these teams. Uh, there's been some impressive teams out there that, you know, LSU, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Alabama, Clemson, all teams uh, still undefeated. Uh, maybe somebody goes down this week. Maybe somebody gets knocked off. But uh, it's, it's certainly college football is a great, great time of year. That's all the time we have this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next time on the Jamie Bordas Show.